A Florida man is found passed out in his car on the highway after 25 beers. A Florida man shot and killed a bear to protect his puppy. A Florida doctor removed a man's liver instead of his spleen. And a Florida man shot a man in the buttocks and chased him with a screwdriver at a Waffle House. I think I got that right. (laughs) These are the weird stories for Friday on Weird AF News. The only daily weird news podcast that exists and the only one that does Florida Friday. That's right. It being a Friday episode, it's all the weird news from Florida. That's what I do. Let's go. A Florida man was found passed out in the turn lane after 25 beers. We have a 41-year-old Florida man named Furman Tlapechko. He's from Apopka, Florida. Do you guys know Furman Tlapechko of Apopka, Florida? How did I say that on the first try? <laughs> it's because I am I only had one beer before recording this. I can't do this with 25 beers. This Florida man was arrested after consuming 25 beers and then trying unsuccessfully to operate some heavy machinery. You guys know. It's a heavy machinery. A car. It's also known as heavy machinery. Okay, so back to the Florida man here. 25 beers. I think he was going for the high score right there. Still can't touch Wade Boggs, though. You know, you guys know about the legendary beer drinking Wade Boggs. 100 beers on a flight, something like that. Anyways, uh, Wade Boggs has a special place in my heart, being that he played for the Boston Red Sox for a number of years. Uh, anyways, I digest. The the local police department in Lady Lake, Florida. Le- Lady Lake. Lay across my big brass bed. Lady Lake sounds lovely. I'm sure it's not, but it sounds lovely. It's definitely not, because it's in Florida. The police say they found this man, Fermin, passed out. Did I say that correctly? Fermin. They found Fermin passed out in his vehicle in the turn lane on U.S. Highway 27 at Longview Avenue in Lady Lake, Florida. He had consumed 25 beers with uh, even more beer in his car. He was working on it, guys. It's hard to... It's when you're trying to drink all the beers, you know, sometimes uh, you, you hit your limit at 25. That's all. So many beers. But it's hot in Florida. Sometimes you got you to gotta just quench that hot thirst by throwing back a couple of frosty 12-packs. That's how, that's how you do it. Hey, anyone want to just throw back a case? It's awfully hot today. Now it says here, Fermin's vehicle was spotted a Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Parked in the turn lane on Highway 27 with Fermin sleeping inside. Yeah, well, you know, you got to give him credit. He, he was like, you know what? Turns out I'm not in the right state of mind to be operating this heavy machinery. So I'm just going to sleep it off right here in the middle of a highway to be on the safe side. Yeah, got to appreciate a Florida man's sense of reason and now that says here the police woke up Fermin, but then had to call in some backup because of a bit of a language barrier the first clue that he had been drinking was that Fermin was driving mostly barefoot because <laughs> mostly barefoot you're either barefoot or mostly barefoot i guess if one sock is on and one isn't then you're mostly barefoot even then that's 50 50 barefoot maybe like his sock was like uh covering most of his foot but the Maybe there's holes in the sock, so then, you know, his toes are poking out. That would be mostly, no, that's mostly sock foot, not mostly barefoot. It says he was wearing a sock, just one. The next hint that Fermin was uh, not sober was the four bottles of Corona on the passenger seat, on deck, quote, on deck, ready to go. When asked about the beers, Fermin claimed that he had drank 25 beers since 5 o'clock. Knocking back 25 beers on a Tuesday is quite an accomplishment, but not really one you should brag to the cops about, it says here. Although, I don't know, I wouldn't be so quick to make judgment upon that. These are obviously the first humans that he encountered after pounding 25 beers. He had to tell somebody, you know. It says this guy, Fermin, failed field sobriety exercises. They're calling them field sobriety exercises. I don't think that's that's what you would call it. <laughs> touching your nose uh <laughs> that's not really walking a straight line would you call that an exercise if that's an exercise and i i'm a exercise fiend this guy refused a breathalyzer unfortunately so obviously going to be arrested let me say also that a 41 year old to be able to drink 25 beers in one night is that's uh that's pretty impressive 
I think maybe in college I might have been able to pull this off. But and then, uh, well, we got some stats on Fermin. Fermin is dig this five foot four, one hundred and sixty pounds. That's pretty good for a, a short guy to pound this many beers. I'm very impressed. It says here he drank about, he drank about nineteen pounds of beer then <laughs> that night. Where are they getting these stats? <laughs> Oh, it also says Fermin's birthday is coming up on the 22nd of the month. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I've done so many Florida Friday, Florida man stories. I don't think I ever <laughs> came across one where they just tell you that the criminal's birthday is coming up. But yeah, very thorough. In case you're wondering what to get Fermin for his birthday, you know, it, it can't just be a case of beer. You need a case of beer plus one. A Florida man shot and killed a bear in order to protect his puppy. We have a 31-year-old Florida man who blasted a bear in order to protect his cute little puppy in Marion County. This is about a month after Florida made it legal for people to kill the bears while defending themselves and their property. Wait, wait, I thought they were only allowed to kill bears that were on crack. The crack bears. you got to protect yourself from the dangerous predator in Florida that's on crack. You guys remember I covered the crack bear story. All the politicians were like, we got to put this law in place because there's crack bears attacking people and their property in Florida. I don't know where they come up with this idea for the crack bears. Um, but obviously you got to defend your puppy from any bear, whether it's on crack or not, but especially a bear that's on crack. Okay. It says this new law took an effect July 1st. Days after Florida governor signed the crack bear bill under the law, shooters have to notify the Florida Wildlife Commission within 24 hours of a bear being killed. The law also prohibits anyone from possessing or selling bear carcasses. According to the Florida wildlife officials, this man, Jesse Tittle, led his dogs outside around 5 a.m. And shortly thereafter, he heard his dogs, a 60 pound pit bull and a 25 pound Pitbull slash Papillon mix puppy barking aggressively from a nearby yard. I I have no idea why anyone would allow their dogs to go off leash and just roam around in Florida. Yeah, with all the killer creatures lurking about. You got gators, you got bears, you got crack bears, you got meth gators, there's pythons, there's various Florida men that are on 25 beers behind the wheel of a, of a vehicle. Some are sleeping, some are driving. So I don't know how you let your dogs out without a leash in Florida. That just seems insane to me. Nonetheless, Jesse lets his dogs out, including the uh, the pit bull slash papillon mix, which I would love to see a photo of. There isn't one in this article, but I think that's a fascinating mix, really. I, didn't, I never heard of such a thing. Uh, I, uh, one of my ex-girlfriends had a papillon while we were together therefore I had a papillon if you're not familiar with a papillon it's the cutest little dog with the biggest ears uh, papillon is butterfly in French and it's this dog is named because it looks like it has a butterfly on top of its head because of those big ears amazing dogs and this is a strange mix here uh, back to the story the Florida Wildlife Commission said Tid Tittle Jesse Tittle called his dogs but the puppy did not return to him the man grabbed his larger dog but it pulled him toward the bear and he ended up on the ground Here's a quote from Tittle. He says, I noticed that it was a bear. I called the dogs and only the big dog came to me. Me and him kind of wrestled around here. I was trying to hold them all from the bear. He wanted to go back because he wasn't coming back. He wanted to go back because he wasn't coming back. I don't make any sense right now, but I just saw a crack bear. Tittle says that he saw the bear near his puppy. So he attempted to fire a warning shot to scare the animal, but struck the bear instead, according to the commission which said the animal tried to climb a tree but then fell to the ground. We got a, another quote here from the uh, gunslinger Jesse Tittle, enemy of all crack bears. He says, quote, You have to draw the line at some point in time. Man, it could have been somebody's kid out there. It could have been my niece, my nephew, anybody, a small kid, a large kid, a medium-sized kid, one of those kids that wear husky clothes. It could have been my grandma, your grandma. It could have been... 
you know, my illegitimate kids. It could have been my legitimate kids. It could have been a stepkid. It could have been an adopted kid. It could have been an auntie, an uncle, a cousin. It could have been a, a, a cousin's half cousins, half cousins twice removed. It could have been your your dad. It could have been your mama. It could have been your mama's mama. You you know, you could have been anybody out there. People deserve to be defended from crack bears it could have been a mannequin you know what i mean you a mannequin you got to protect from a crack bear too man anybody anybody it could have been a, a your invisible friend it could have been, all right <laughs> sorry i'm taking some liberties with jesse's quote because it's just so funny could have been anybody my nephew my niece a small kid a grandma a large kid <laughs> we get the point jesse now, the Wildlife Commission says that Jesse returned the dogs to his house safely, and when he went back to check on that bear, it was dead, so he called the Florida Wildlife Commission. Officials did not provide the size of the bears. Jesse told the officers that he routinely carries a 9 millimeter handgun in case he needs to protect his dogs from coyotes. Another quote from my man Jesse here, the gunslinger, the crack bear killing gunslinger i did the right thing i didn't do anything wrong i did nothing wrong whether i face these consequences or not my dad told me there was a stand your ground law against them bears man i was willing to go to jail over shooting the bear now the florida wildlife commission uh, says that jesse will not be going to jail because they determined his actions were reasonable to protect the life of his dog jesse says he sees bears in the yard constantly Many have ravaged his trash cans and damaged his car, as well as 13 of his goats. <laughs> what this guy? What kind of world is Jesse living in? I mean, you think you, you think you know Florida? No, goats, bears, what the hell? Again, though, I mean, if you know there's bears around, why let your dogs go out without a leash? Just let them roam around? It just seems very silly, silly behavior to me. Jesse has some more to say at the end of the article here about these bears. He says, the bears are sitting on the porch waiting for you to push the door open. They're breaking into cars and windows to grab lunch sitting in there from earlier that day. It's not the bear's fault, but it's not the people's fault either. Jesse has a heart, though. He says that he hopes the state of Florida finds a better solution so that animals and humans can coexist without bloodshed. That's right. Bears and Florida men should coexist. You know, they can always uh, smoke crack together. A Florida doctor mistakenly removed a patient's liver instead of his spleen. Terrible. This is why you always get a second opinion. Yeah. Even when you're cut open in the middle of surgery, have a second opinion. Hey, hey, before you cut out my organ there, why don't you, uh, let's get somebody else in here to make sure that's the right organ, eh? We have here a Florida surgeon mistakenly removing a man's liver instead of his spleen. Very bad day for the man. It caused him to die on the operating table. Very sad. Um... I mean, I'm not a surgeon, but I'm pretty sure I know the difference between a spleen and a liver. Yeah. I, I, I played that game Operation. You guys know the game Operation where you take, you take the tweezers and you remove the organs from that, that naked man? The game? Yeah, pretty good at that. So now I know, I know what they kind of look like, sort of. All right, let's get some more details. Sadly, William Bryan, age 70, underwent surgery on August 21st at the Ascension Sacred Heart Emerald Coast Hospital in Miramar, Florida. Oh, that would be funny to say with the Boston accent. At the Ascension Sacred Heart Emerald Coast Hospital in Miramar, Florida. He went in because of a spleen abnormality. He was admitted to the hospital for some evaluation. And although the Bryan family were reluctant to have surgery in Florida because they actually live in a different state, they were persuaded by Dr. Thomas Shaknovsky, a general surgeon, um, and the chief's medical officer, Christopher Bacani, that he could experience serious complications if he actually left the hospital's care that day. Both Shakovsky and Bacani appeared to be involved in some discussions, according to the records, for how to proceed with Brian's medical treatment for his spleen. Shakovsky performed a hand-assisted laparoscopic splenectomy. Hmm. I want to say that again because it was kind of fun. A hand-assisted laparoscopic splenectomy. Splenectomy on uh, Mr. Brian. And unfortunately, it had deadly consequences. Because uh, Dr. Shakovsky didn't remove the spleen, which I assume you're supposed to, in a splenectomy. Instead, during this splenectomy, he removed 
Mr. Brian's liver, which I think is probably called a liverectomy. Is that a liverectomy? Anybody out there in the medical field can corroborate that that's a liverectomy? I'm doing my best here, guys. They removed his liver and in so doing transected the major vasculature supplying the liver, causing immediate and catastrophic blood loss resulting in death. The Dr. Shakovsky <laughs> proceeded with labeling the removed liver specimen as a, quote, spleen, and it wasn't until following the death that it was identified that the organ removed was actually Mr. Bryan's liver as opposed to the spleen. Well, I mean, it's really not the doctor's fault. You know, all these organs look the same. They're red and shiny and squishy. How's he supposed to tell the difference? <laughs> wow, dummy. Dr. Shankovsky told... Beverly Bryan that her husband's spleen was so diseased that it was actually four times larger than normal and it had moved to the other side of the body. But in a typical human body, the liver exists on the opposite side of the abdomen and it is much larger than a spleen, he said. Okay, this guy's just making shit up right here. Oh, it's the darndest thing. Uh, the, the spleen was infected. It looked like a liver. You know, it looked like a liver and it had, it had actually migrated over to the other side of the body where the liver should be, guys. That's what I'm telling you. And, uh, you know, it was all discolored, like, like the exact color of a... Ah... Uh, Forget it, guys. All right, look, I took his liver out on purpose. All right, I'm trying to sell livers on the black market. Ha ha! It's a it's called a side hustle, guys. It's a side gig. Everybody needs one. I sell uh, these organs on only organs. Now, uh, this isn't Doctor Shakovsky's first rodeo. It says he made a similar mistake in 2023, removing portions of a pancreas instead of an adrenal gland in a case that was settled privately. Wow! And this guy's still uh, practicing. Well, that's the state of Florida for you, for you. <laughs> these guys. <laughs> you get a second, third chance. Ah, how many patients can this guy kill? Ah, just let, let him keep performing operations on people. Let him keep removing organs. Good job, Florida. Now it says here the wife, Beverly, is pushing for criminal and civil proceedings against Dr. Shakovsky as she should. And she should be rewarded as well. And this guy should not be practicing medicine. He still doesn't think he did anything wrong. Here's a quote from Dr. Shakovsky following this disaster. He says, oh, and what, what's the big deal? There's nothing to worry about. Humans have two livers, and we can get along fine with just one. Doesn't everybody know this? A Florida man shot one man in the buttocks and chased another with a screwdriver at a Waffle House. Best title ever of a story. <laughs> Escambia County, Florida is where... These shenanigans can be found. Deputies with the Escambia County Sheriff's Office arrested a Pensacola, Florida man who allegedly shot a man in the butt and chased another man around a Waffle House with a screwdriver, according to the arrest report. 24-year-old De... Uh, De oh my goodness, I can't say this name. De Quantaris? De Quantaris? Jamaro Lucky? Lucky! <laughs> Lucky was arrested. I'll just call him Lucky. Lucky was arrested and is accused of attempted homicide, aggravated assault, distribution of a Schedule One narcotic within 1,000 feet of a school, distribution of marijuana within 1,000 feet of a school, discharging a firearm in public, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and disorderly conduct on the premise of the establishment. Wow, that's a whole, uh, that's a mouthful for, to, for Lucky here. Now, let's get the play-by-play -play here. According to the report, Lucky pulled out a gun and shot at a man, but the bullet hit the ground and ricocheted into the man's buttocks. After that, the man who had been shot allegedly ran into the Waffle House. Which Wait, how, how's the man that's been shot in the butt run into a Waffle House? You're going to run after you've been shot in the butt? That's unbelievable, man. This guy's got some kind of invincible butt. Some uh, his hind, He's got hind parts of steel, it would seem. So he gets shot in the butt. He runs into a Waffle House, which caused patrons to start running to the back of the business. They obviously heard the gunshot. They probably saw the man get shot in the buttocks. He's probably bleeding out his buttocks. I mean, it's not that that's something that you, that's out of the ordinary inside a Waffle House. And honestly, guns in a Waffle House is probably just par for the course in Florida, from what I've heard about Waffle Houses. The arrest report said one man tried to run out of the front door to leave the area, which is when Lucky began chasing him outside the building with a screwdriver. My goodness. <laughs> this guy's trying to eat his breakfast in the Waffle House, and this Lucky, Lucky chases him out with a screwdriver. I think that's the number six breakfast combo, I believe. The uh, <laughs> poached eggs with a uh, screwdriver attack. Not to be confused with the number five, which, which is a breakfast burrito. 
with a machete-wielding Florida man next to you. And uh, also not to be confused with the number two, which which is uh, spam, spam and eggs with meth, a side of meth and a gator and a pet gator. Oh, can I get my e- e- eggs over easy? And could you shoot them, please? That's what I would like. Ha 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 ha. All right. Uh, lastly, it says here, uh, when officers arrived, they found multiple bags containing marijuana and MDMA on Lucky. He's just doing his thing, man, in the Waffle House. And if it's your first Waffle House, you must fight. Them's the rules. Close the door, baby. And let me blow your mind. Hello, my loves. Thank you for spending a little time with your buddy Jonesy and the Weird AF News podcast. Specifically the Florida Friday episode, which I think was a dandy. And I give credit to those of you who sent me amazing Florida stories the past couple days. It was very helpful. Appreciate that. Um, I don't have much to say here. Not not really anything to announce. Uh, no, that's about it. I hope you have a nice weekend. And if you want to support the show, check out my website, weirdafnews.com, where you can buy your buddy Jonesy a coffee or a beer. I mean, it's a coffee technically on the thing, but then I might spend it on beer. Just giving you a warning. I like stouts very much. Mm-hmm. Very much into stouts. And um, also you could join the Patreon. But Patreon's very cool because you get extra content through the Patreon. It's like joins, joining a little club of uh, big fans of the Weird AF News podcast in there. We have a uh, fantasy football league ongoing in there. Pretty cool. This is uh, NFL Week 2 coming up. Very excited about it. Uh I feel pretty confident. I got a good team, so we'll see how this goes. I'll probably win the whole thing is what's going to happen, I think. Anyways, uh, so hope you have an amazing weekend. I hope you, uh, hope your fantasy teams do well, I have to say. And uh, I hope you're with loved ones and friends having a dandy old time as the summer winds down. I'm still up in the Bay, San Francisco, and doing shows. Tonight I'm doing a show in San Francisco Friday at uh, the Speakeasy. And then tomorrow night in Oakland, two shows, one at the Washington Inn at 8 p.m. and another one at a place called the Calabash Restaurant at 9 p.m. And then on Sunday, I'm at the Branham Lounge. I think it's called the Branham Lounge. And that's in San Jose. So check this out. If you if you want more details, just go to my Instagram, at Funny Jones. And then, uh, yeah, be good to yourself, okay? Stay away from the crack bears, all right? Watch out for naked men with screwdrivers.